1. The Perils of Growing Up in Turn of the Century Washington, D.C. 1900 Episode 2 A 19th Century Washington, D.C. Love Story Pearl and the Buffalo Soldier Study the Past, What is Past is Prologue Prologue Coleman Family Tree Being a Negro in America is tough But we made it I came here in a whisper, I was born, 1873 The Perils of Growing Up in 19th Century America 1900 Life in Washington DC 1909 My formative years 1890-1910 High Society in 20th Century Washington DC 1908 Educating Washington DC Negroes 1912 I was a flapper in Georgetown 1912 The Buffalo Soldier 1917 Top Coleman 1918 Book Information Two, Pearl and the Buffalo Soldier. Three, a brief history of African Americans in Washington D.C. African Americans in Washington D.C. 1800 to 1975. There are a number of things that make the story of Black Washington different. Among them, Washington has always been a colony. Thus, even if the city's blacks would become equal to other D.C. residents they would still not be equal to other Americans. 4. Further, at a number of critical moments in DC history, such as during the Shepherd period in the 19th century and the Marion Barry era, hate and prejudice became inseparable components of opposition to self-government. Ethnic issues were frequently disguised as economic ones. 5. Another characteristic of colonies is that their stories, their history, their spirits, and their places tend to be ignored or discounted. 6. Thus, even among African Americans, the importance of the city is not as widely known as one might expect. Although often forgotten today, Washington was very much a southern city until the 1980s. 7. Although often forgotten today, Washington was very much a southern city until the 1980s. 8. The northern and the southern civil rights stories are quite different and DC belongs among the latter. 9. Nonetheless, the city's segregation was almost entirely by custom rather than by law, and it had a number of curious anomalies. 10. Washington always had a large number of free blacks and was considered, even during slavery, as a relatively good place to be compared to other parts of the South. 11. One of the early free blacks, Yero Mamout, a devout Muslim, earned enough from his hauling business to buy a house in Georgetown in 1800. 1888, Capital Savings Bank. 12. Aletha Tanner purchased her own freedom in 1810, then went on to free her older sister and five of her children, eventually helping 18 people become emancipated. 13. In 1813, Tobias Hanson, a slave in the Anacostia area, purchased his freedom. He would later buy 24 acres and the freedom of his wife, two daughters, and five grandchildren. 14. In 1800 more than a quarter of DC was black and nearly 20% of the blacks were free. 15. By 1820 the number of slaves had doubled, but thereafter declined. The number of free blacks continued to grow. 16. There was also an active abolitionist movement even though in 1835 Congress banned anti-slavery literature in the city. 17. Being free, however, meant living under conditions that in our day we associate with apartheid. Saturday Hay Ride. 18. For example, in 1808 the city passed a series of black codes that included 
Fines for blacks out after 10 p.m. Requirement that freedmen carry. Documents. 19. Fines for playing cards or dice. And 40 lashes for slaves caught it. Disorderly meetings. There were also cash bonds that were required. 20. DC was also a major slave trading center. And the restrictive laws increased including one that required every black family to post a peace bond. 21. By 1835 business licenses were denied. African Americans for everything except driving carts and carriages. 22. Nonetheless, Washington was considered much better than further south and the black population continued to increase. 23. In fact, one of the threats the city's slaveholders used was that they would send unruly servants to hell, i.e. further south. 24. Episode 2. The Perils of Growing Up in Turn of the Century. Washington, D.C. 1900, Episode 2. 25. Growing up as a strong Negro woman. Growing up in the 1890s in rural Carroll County, Maryland was not bad, but it was not good either. African Americans woman, C. 1880. 26. It was only a matter of time that I had to get out of there. I was not going to be no damn farmers for share. Cropper's wife. I ain't. 27. Most people living down there were born there, would grow up there, live, work and die there. That was it. 28. They had no other choice. Negro and white folk didn't know no better. 29. They had done the same thing for hundreds of years, and for Negroes. That was before and after being slaves. 30. There wasn't much to do there except maybe go to Waldorf City, the county seat. 31. You could shop in the stores where Negroes were allowed to shop in, if you had money, if you had a way to get there, and if it was the light of day. 32. Negroes weren't allowed to go out at night. You could be arrested and shot for doing so. 33. You certainly didn't want to walk the pitch black country roads of rural Carroll County and the Gold Star Highway, Route 301 to Waldorf City, especially if you are a woman. 34. There was always a chance that someone would snatch you up and take you into the woods to do what they want with you. 35. Remember, there wasn't any law that prevented a white man from doing this and the law didn't care if a negro man did this. You didn't have anything to say either way. African Americans woman, C. 1800. 36. Once in Waldorf City, you could go to the movies for a penny, sit in the balcony reserved for negroes. 37. You would see all the evil and worldly things that you were taught to avoid, that you read about in your Bible, and what your pastor preached against. 38. If I went, I would never tell Grandpa, because he was a preacher and he didn't look too kindly to these types of activities. 39. I like to dance to music, boogay, woogie, hillbilly, and bebop that I heard on records. But we didn't have anywhere to go to dance except at the county fair. 40. Most of the time I just sang my own songs and danced by myself in the barn. 41. We had a lot of local Negro musicians, quartets and bands that performed at someone's party or wedding, and we always hooped it up after a funeral. 42. This music really got your feet tapping. But that was about it. 43. 
no juke joints, cabarets, or clubs were allowed in Carroll County. White folk didn't want or trust Negroes congregating in large numbers, except for church going on. 44. Men weren't allowed to dance close or even 10 feet from a woman then. The Bible said that this was a sin, so I am told. 45. I was determined to go to Washington, D.C. and to get out of the backwards ways of rural Carroll County, Maryland. And I did. 46. I went to Washington, D.C. in 1900 to start my new life and career. 47. I thank God that he gave me those Proctor girls as my guides and they kept me straight until I met my Buffalo soldier, John Coleman. 48. There was nothing to do except to have babies. Rural Negro Farmers, C. 1890 49 There were a lot of babies popping out all over Hampstead, and I knew that this was another entertainment pastime for women and men, down there 50 Finding a man for women and doing women for men was probably the most exciting thing you could do here in Hampstead 51. Most women would fight over a sorry man if he was good in bed. Of course these activities often lead to having babies. 52. Without much to do, this form of finding him or her and bedding them down was the ultimate entertainment. 53. Telling others about your activities was like a badge of honor and also very popular to do. 54. Gossip helped to fill the time that you were off from work, and having babies by different men gave some women confidence in themselves. 55. They were more concerned as to how popular they were or how many of the men wanted them in the community. 56. Being the community slut wasn't so bad for some women because that meant that more men would come seeking your pleasures. 57. Most of the time, these men would give you money for the things that you wanted to get to you. 58. Some women even charged money for their favors. 59. It seems like no one was doing anything to protect themselves from diseases and from getting pregnant 60 it seems that they could just use a sheepskin on his thing or just pull it out when he was about to pop in her 61 that rarely happened and most of my girlfriends had at least five children before they reached 16 years of age 62. I kept away from all this activity and protected my cherry for my husband to be. 63. I could find other things to do other than making babies. 64. But nobody cared and nobody said anything to these boys, girls, men, and women. 65. There was nothing to do down there. So they just kept doing what they had done for hundreds of years. 66. Make babies and watch them grow up poor and following in the same footsteps as their mamas and papas. 67. This was even more reason for me to get out of there. 68. I had better things on my mind and having a whisper baby like me was not one of them 69 we got high C 1890 Center Market, Washington DC 70 you could not buy, sell, or drink liquor because Carroll County was a dry county 
71. But you could make all the pot liquor that you want, as long as it was done on your own property and you were not caught making it by the local sheriff. 72. Sometimes, if you made good pot liquor, Sheriff Handy would catch you, take a sip of it, ask for a bottle, then walk off and leave you alone. 73. Some of the men grew this plant, dried it and smoked it like tobacco too. Feel good like their ancestors did in Africa. 74. I don't know what that stuff was, but if you sniffed the foul smelling smoke from it, it did get you to acting silly. 75. That was it for entertainment down there. 76. Getting high on Jesus. A rural Negro family, Carroll County, MD. C-1876 77 We could dance and sing to holy Ghost music at church on Sunday Morning service, but that was it 78 And if you danced, you better dance Like you got the Holy Spirit Respectable and without shaking Your hips 79 Church was pretty much our Entertainment activity, I guess when you include Sunday school and church services afterwards, was where I spent most of my time. 80. First Baptist of Hampstead Church was my juke joint and cabaret nearly all week. 81. Our week went like this, mothers and grandmothers usher board meetings. On Tuesday evening, prayer service, and the mourner's bench. African Americans post outside of church, C-1870. 82. Wednesday afternoons was adult. Choir practice, Thursday evening. The young people's choir practice. 83. On Friday evening church clean. Up and maintenance activities end. On Saturday we always have a church picnic 84 in the summer after supper when daylight was still there we would watch the men play stick ball and kick ball on the field in the back of the church until sunset 85 pastor said that this would help the men to exercise and to burn off their frustrations from the hard physical work and verbal abuse taken from white folk from the week past 86 he said that the Bible said that an idle mind was the devil's workshop. 87. He didn't want these men to go back to work all steamed up and mad about the hatred and mistreatment that they had to go through every day. 88. We sort of had Mondays off because that was the day off and day of rest for Pastor Thomas. 89. There was always something else for women to do at the church, like the flower, the pulpit committee, and the women's and men's club, etc. 90. If we didn't have something to do, then they would find something to do around the church. 91. Church was pretty much the main entertainment that I had for my life here in the country and this was the life of most Hampstead women 92 now those were just the evening activities going on at the church our church also had the community school in the church sanctuary 93 although you were not required to go to school as many of the men in the community did not for a woman it was mandatory 94. School did not offer anything promising for a man to get a better place in life, but for women you didn't have much of a future to look forward to in rural Maryland. 95. You could be a wife, birth and raise a lot of babies at home, you could work as maids and kitchen 
help, or as a mammy for white folk. 96. Or you could work in the tobacco. And cotton fields cropping tobacco. Or picking cotton. 97. Or you could work as a crab picker. An oyster chucker at the seafood. Plants. That was it. 98. Those cotton and tobacco fields. Were hot and that damn cropping. Picking and shucking tore up your. Hands, your body, and your spirit. After working each day. 99. When you worked the fields, at the. End of the day you were all burned. Up and as black as tar from the. Heat of the sun. 100. On top of that, you would stink. From sweat, dirt, and filth standing. Up all day in that sun. 101. Nah, this ain't for me. I tried. Working in the field one day and. That was it. I decide that I have to. Do something else. 102. All of this work was rough and no. Place for a refined woman like me. Who liked to keep her hands and fingernails clean and pretty. 103. So I decided to get my education. And to become a teacher, and to do something better with my life. 104. I knew that I had to leave rural. Carroll County, Maryland, and to go somewhere else. 105. Going to Washington, D.C. Pennsylvania Avenue, 1915. 106. One day, my second cousin, Dorothy Proctor, told me that she was moving to Washington, D.C. to work for the U.S. government. 107. She said that there were plenty of good jobs up there and that a lot of her cousins and friends who wanted to get out of Carroll County, moved up there. 108. She said that they were being paid good and got to work inside all day. 109. That was good enough for me, so I asked her when she was going and could if I go with her? She said yes and that was it. 110. Back then, if you were a Negro woman, you didn't dare go anywhere by yourself especially to a big city like Washington, D.C. 111 Grandpa said that the Bible warned me that it can't help the good Christian when they chose to live in a city full of devilment and sin 112 He said that there is no telling what might happen to me up there if I went there by myself 113 he finally decided that I could go, though, because I was going with my older cousin, Dorothy, and her sister, Cecilia, 114. They were older than me, had good sense, and they had lived in Washington, D.C. during the summer with our second cousin, Rufus Proctor and his wife, Lonnie, 115. They said that we could stay with them until we got up on our feet and found a place of our own, or until we came back home. 116. I wasn't coming back home except to visit my family, so I didn't plan to fail. They warned me to stay safe up there. 117. Plus, Grandpa really didn't have no say so in my decision because I was now 16 and I had come of age to make my own decisions 118 I wasn't being snotty with him and grandma because I knew that they cared about me 119 mama thought it would be alright since I was going with my cousins she didn't discourage me but she Warned me to stay safe up there. 120. The Proctor Girls. My second cousins. 14 M.U. Street, D.C., 1920 S. 
121. The Proctor girls, like me, were good girls and smart. 122. It is hard to be this way in this time. They were high yeller, damn. Near white as much as all of the Proctor family of Carroll County. 123. They had a big and well known family in the county of mostly high. Yellow Negroes with mostly white. Ken. 124. They pretty much ran all of the Negro activity in Negro Carroll County because white folk favored them because of their light skinned complexion. 125. They were also former house slave for the Carroll County white elite. And they didn't feel threatened by them because they looked white. 126. Most of them were light skinned, with blue or green eyes, some had blonde or red hair, but most had Negro eyes, lips, and features. 127. White folk trusted them because they could see past their Negro features as long as they could see their high yellow and near white skin. 128. There is an old saying that my mother used to use, if you are light, then you are all right. If you are black, then step back. 129. She was right, but I used to follow up by saying, if you are a man, you can, but you are women, you can't go swimming. 130. This was pretty much the attitude of pre-20th century white and negro men. I hated this. 131. Back then, in rural Maryland I had no control over my body, my mind, and what I wanted to do. 132. The men pretty much rule the roost. Down there. 133. Using Bible verses like women are. Adam's rib and that a woman was placed here on earth by God to serve at the pleasure of men. 134. I didn't go for that. 135. The Proctor family women pretty much ran everything because they were light-skinned, pretty and were a mixture of black and white blood. 136. That made them feisty and crazy. I saw this as being good, so I started acting this way too. 137. Proctor women were smart enough, though to back down on making their men mad at them. 138. They would take charge of everything in the family, but kiss their man's feet when things went wrong, even if it wasn't their fault. 139. Don't make sense to me, but there were few if any marriages breaking up in the Proctor family. 140. They realized that they were the boss, but they had to make him think that he was the boss or others would think that he could be disrespected and run over. 141. There was no in-between, they taught me, knowing how to straddle that line of being a strong Proctor woman was a family secret. 142. I learned this secret early and used it to keep my buffalo soldier happy. That's why he married me so young and he was an older man. 143. I was determined to go to Washington DC and to get out of the backwards ways of rural Carroll County, Maryland, and I did. 144. I went to Washington DC in 1900 to start my new life and career. I thank God that he gave me those Proctor girls as my guides and they kept me straight until I met my Buffalo soldier, John Coleman. 145. Episode 3. 
Life in Washington, D.C. 1909, Chapter 3 Southwest D.C. Street Scene 146 Welcome to Washington City I finally left the country, Carroll County, Maryland I remember the day I left, as plain as day Late summer, July 29, 1899 just six months before the start of a new year and a new century. I was all of 18 years of age. What a day. I hopped on that buggy wagon with my second cousins, the Proctor girls and my cousin Johnny Lay, the Waldorf Town Negro blacksmith, and the boyfriend of Sally Mae Proctor. Entrance into Washington City, 1898, Independence Avenue and 7th Street, SW, Washington, D.C. 147. Welcome to Washington City. Entrance into Washington City, 1898, Independence. Avenue and 7th Street, SW, Washington, D.C. 148. I was set for a long and arduous four. Our journey to Washington City on. The old Blue Star Highway up. Through Waldorf Town to Carroll. County seat. 149. We would go through Clinton, Maryland. In Prince George County, then into Washington City along Southern Avenue. 150. Next, we would go down Pennsylvania Avenue to my temporary rooming house on E Street, Southwest, near the Washington Naval Yard in the Marine Barracks. 151. Traveling through Waldorf Town was like having a heavy burden lifted off my back 152 I had finally grown tired of living in the country and I knew being a big city girl was my destiny 153 I was determined to prove all of my Carroll County relatives and neighbors wrong that she'll be back as they wished me good luck and goodbye 154. When I got all I had in one bag and hopped on that wagon, I said to myself, I am out of here at last. At last, I am out of here. Just about everything that you need to know about the lives of African Americans in the 19th century. 19th century African American life history series. Online 19th century African American history series. Living in Washington, D.C. Online 19th Century African American History Series Plantation Living Online 19th Century African American History Series The Great Migration North Online 19th Century African American History Series Jim Crow Loss Online 19th Century African American History Series Emancipation Proclamation Online 19th Century African American History Series Buffalo Soldiers Online 19th Century African American History Series Educating Black Children in the South A 19th Century Washington DC Love Story Pearl And the Buffalo Soldier Grandmother Jane An American Love Story in 19th Century Richmond, Virginia 1848-1938 Booker T. Isms. Educator, orator, ex slave, Republican, 1856 to 1915. Online 19th Century African American History Series. Quotes by Booker T. Washington. Since 2008, we have trained the staffs of thousands of organizations nationwide. Author D. Harold Green is the owner of Workshop Go, our 18th year Faith Institute headquartered in Jacksonville, North Carolina, is one of only two, two, African-American-owned, national and international education technology training companies in the United States. The goal of Skilled Force JLB National Community Trainer Academy is to develop a full-time national community-centric workforce readiness, entrepreneurship, and life preparation skills, soft skills, train the Trainer Academy program. Visit our website at https colon slash slash www.faithinstitute.org slash about hyphen us dot html
Our workshops can teach students how to work in a manufacturing plant or they can learn how to start their own manufacturing business. D. Harold Green, CCMT. More comments about our workshops. We train trainers, that's what we do. A simplified online training infrastructure, simplified certificate training, easy access online workshops, reduced training costs, reduced days off for training. We offer workshops go 19th century African American life history series. Reduce travel expenses for training access to over 200 online workshops, workforce readiness skills, start a business skills, life preparation skills. Workshops go. 19th century African American life history series. No setup fees. Start immediately. Specify single workshops. $4,799, 100 plus attendees. $5,949, 150 plus attendees. $7,969, 200 plus attendees. One year subscription plan. We train trainers, that's what we do. For more information, contact D. Harold Green, CCMT. Workshops Go. A division of Faith Institute of Entrepreneurship Incorporated. Jacksonville, North Carolina, 285-40910-679-4319. Email trainers at faithinstitute.org.